Hey everyone, welcome back to the place we are testing every single mask that we can find on the internet. I know, we started with Amazon, but let's get bigger here. The internet is more than Amazon. Sorry, Jeff Bezos. Sorry you had to hear it from me. All right, this is the Little Lives, the Max LL95. Uh, don't love that. I was actually looking at this company, Little Lives PPE, on the internet, and uh, I uh, actually, I, I looked into it and, I, and um, some interesting things here I'll go into in just a minute, but let's open this up. We, we had tested um, their, their child's uh, mask and this is for teens and maybe adults. Put it in the clamper and see what she says. No. <laughs> All right, there we go. And we'll let her rip. This is a PFE machine, particulate filtration efficiency machine. We are doing the N95 test here on this mask to see if it passes standards. What standards, you may ask? That is a great question, Lloyd. I know, I'm just talking to myself here. It's late. So they're calling this the LL95, which obviously is after the company name Little Lives. I don't love LL95 as a name because it's kind of suggesting that it's an N95 when clearly it has not gone through any of the normal standards process. And on the back, they're actually, if you can see this, directly comparing themselves to CAN95 and N95. And they're actually claiming that their masks are better, 99%, than N95 or CAN95, which is just patently ridiculous because the, the reason why N95s are so good is the process of manufacturing and how NIOSH, uh, an organization run by the CDC, has tremendous oversight from a manufacturer to make sure that you are doing the right thing in the manufacturing process. The LL95 has zero oversight. So they're making a claim, which we're testing here, but there's so much more. There's actually seven, eight tests, I think, that you have to do uh, to get an N95. And PFE is just one of the tests. Um, I will say this though, I actually looked into the business. Uh, this is the adult page. And if you look uh, into the actual business about who started it, it turns out that it was these three women doctors, uh, well, one of them was a doctor, maybe two of them, and they started uh, making face shields for kids, uh, which is pretty cool because the whole idea, although I would have a hard time getting my kids to not touch their face uh, and to keep a face shield on for eight hours, the idea is like if you can get them out of that habit by putting a face shield on, you know, it could make a difference in the pandemic. I think what happened was they partnered they made the face shields because if you look at all their news, it's about the face shields. And then they partnered with somebody for this LL95 and they're making this mask. Um, I just don't like the, the way it's being marketed to you as somebody who, who makes masks. Yeah, and it's not a very high quality mask either. The, the, uh, the kids mask was one of the poorest <laughs> quality made kids mask. Well, one side's pretty good. Kids mask that we've seen. The other thing that I saw, and I'm just gonna do this here, it's gonna do this test is on the kids mask. It shouldn't tear that easily. It shouldn't tear that easily. This is the RKN95. <laughs> okay, see it should rip like this. It shouldn't break evenly. A good weld should like rip apart like, like ours did. And that's what I was looking for it to do. All right, let's try the smell in the face there. Looks good, nice nose wire. Fits well, soft polypropylene. Oh, interesting. The smell is like a lot different than the kid's mask. The kid's mask was, had very low odor. This one smells like it's been in somebody's trunk. Like the trunk of a car. There's like some road smell, gasoline, something like that. Um, a little more smell than I'm used to. And let me, let me just show you one thing here real quick, just because I happen to notice it. You can tell that the quality is not ideal because the way that they're burning through, you see, they're just like, the, the welds are, are so hot that they're burning through and look at how uneven they are. They should be right in the center and that's, that's the mark of a good manufacturer. But does any of that matter if it doesn't protect you? This whole, a lot of that's subjective. They're claiming 99.5. The, the kid's mask did 97%, so it didn't meet their own claims. This one, however, they got some good fabric on there. I gotta give them that, 99.855. 90, ballsy claim to say 99.5%. I don't think I'd do that. <laughs> I wouldn't claim every mask that came out of my factory would be that high. They're making that claim, and in this case, 
they are meeting that claim. What was the breathability? 151. Breathability was really good, 151. I mean, for something that's 99, look, I've seen higher uh, and I've seen better breathability. I typically want something to be 150 pascals or lower to be uh, to wear it for, for you know eight hours, something like that. This is right at that 151, so actually that's good. So from a fabric perspective, this is actually a really good mask. Um, and I was actually expecting it to do a lot worse because the kids' mask didn't do as well as this. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time and attention. You know, like, good fabric, good quality, um, but there are better deals, personally, on Amazon that I think you could get. Uh, you know, even though they're not charging shipping, that's kind of a high price for, for five masks. Um, all right. <laughs> It's kind of a high price for five masks that are not being held to any sort of standard other than their own. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope this has been helpful. And if it has, uh, thanks for being here. I appreciate you. And I will see you on that next test, which we are doing every single day tomorrow at 10 a.m. See you then.